dear brothers and sisters i did not know anything about guru purnima until one fine day in 1967 when i was a 3 year old abhyasi i walked into babuji maharaj home in shahjahanpur late afternoon you know there were only few abhyasis in those days probably six or seven at home who all very happily greeted me hugged me and said it's such a wonderful thing you are here on this auspicious day i said what auspicious day they said today is guru purnima jastar babu ji maharaj came i said what is this guru purnima he said guru purnima is a day on which according to tradition if this disciple is with the guru he progresses far far you know speedily than he could by himself so that is the significance of guru purnima and then babu ji looked at me and smiled and said how old are you i said i am 40 he said may you progress 40 times as fast so you see what brother punit said earlier this is this morning about long fellow is a very necessary thing to know because it tells us what we have to do it puts the onus for personal evolution on each individual you do you progress you study you earn you work you earn you know things like that nothing is given by you know destiny or divine just because we are here and say we deserve it when we see the vast spectrum of life with all its enormous you know difficulties differences problems successes we wonder why it is so why is it that some have to struggle and some are born with so called silver spoons in their mouth and nowadays maybe even diamond spoons when a child is born which is an heir to say a fortune of 2000 crores 4000 crores is it to its advantage or to its eventual disadvantage because money has nothing to do with property has nothing to do with it what the parents leave you is nothing to do with it their duty is to give you what is good for you as a human being good training as a baby good education as well as much as they can afford training in good manners behavior etiquette which must become part of us not put on you know we must not be rude one in one setting and very polite in another which is only like washing our hands in soap before we are going to dine do these things become part of my nature can you say of this man he is well behaved under all circumstances whether you curse him or bless him he is well behaved he says thank you because in one way of looking at it a curse can be a very good thing it can awaken us to the possibilities of what can be babuji bara said a curse cannot work unless what is cursed is somewhere in your future suppose somebody has to lose a fortune 20 years later and a rishi like uh, vishwamitra or somebody you know durvasa who was well known for it he curses you may you be poverty ridden 
that can be brought forward in time so that instead of become a pauper 20 years later, you are a pauper now. Babuji said, Deko, look, there is grace in this also because he is now young. The Guru's curse can be a blessing because he will lose everything, but he has time to start over again, energy to start over again, and most important, wisdom to start all over again. Whereas if he loses everything at the age of 60, he will die a pauper. So you see, there are ways of looking at it. And that is why you, as you get up, go up on the ladder of spiritual life, spiritual evolution, and eventually you become what Babaji used to call a saint. They pray for more and more miseries. Let me get rid of everything quickly, pata pat. Let me not wait for eons of time in three lives hence, five lives hence. Our duty is to condense our evolution between this birth and this end when it is coming to each one of us. Babaji Maharaj said, who knows whether there is a next life or not? Big religions don't believe in it. Hindus believe, but Islam doesn't believe, Christianity doesn't believe. One life. So in this life, when we know what we are, where we are, why we are, let us benefit to the maximum possible by getting in touch with all the forces of evolution that can push me up and avoid everything that can pull me down which is the fundamental wisdom that we all need to acquire. That is the way to ensure personal evolution by our own effort to the best extent that we can. To quote Longfellow again, you see. The same footsteps, you know, terrified another person in another context. When he saw footsteps on the sands of the beach, and he was terrified, Robinson Crusoe. So what do steps show? Then to another soul who was under the custody of God and who God, whom God had said, I am taking you with me wherever I go. And he sees, you know, there are places where there are two pairs of steps and somewhere there is only one and he says, God, you said you would always with me. Why only one row of steps? So God smiles compassionately, understandingly, lovingly and says, My son, those were the dangerous stretches where I carried you. Therefore, only my footsteps are there. So if we look at these varying stories about footsteps, I would not like to see my footsteps, you know, all alone like Robinson Crusoe. I would not even like to see two pairs of footsteps. Suffice it that he carries me if he thinks I deserve it, if he thinks I need it, and if he is willing to do it. Even masters have to be willing. That they are always willing does not mean that they should always be willing. There are circumstances under which a guru can refuse a chela. He said, no, sorry, that may be a test. We are too blithe and confident, self-confident, other confident here in our mission, because everybody who comes is invited lovingly, given sittings, maybe suppose, uh, supported with samosas and chai. And uh, instead of feeling that we are blessed. Often the Abhyasi thinks he is bestowing something on the mission by being here. Very, very unfortunate if people think like that. Because in Sahaj Mahan, let me tell you, progress is simple as Babuji said, but not easy. Every day I, I know when I am not able to sleep or half awake, 
I have my own personal, uh, shall we say, discussions with my Guruji. And say, you said this is simple. He said, yes, it is simple. Morning meditation, even in cleaning, night prayer. What is difficult? I said, no, Babuji, it is simple but difficult. You see, to bring the mind into, first of all, your own ability to regulate it, not control it, takes time. And that is what sadhana is about when we start. Repeated meditation, you learn more and more how to bring your mind into your regulation and say, now do this. It is like training a horse or a bullock or a lion, but they are easy to train. The mind? Mm -hmm. I am reminded of a story where a boy in Bombay, Juhu Beach, found a bottle in the ocean. He made, he made the mistake of opening it and one of the jinns came, you know. Salam, Huzur. You have to keep me occupied, otherwise I shall kill you. So on the spur of the moment, he said, build me a bridge from here to Sydney, Australia. So the jinn looked at him and said, can't you think of something easier? He said, change the mind of my wife. The jinn said, quick, two lanes or four lanes. Even for that jinn, you know. So it's not easy. The guru can assist us so long as we do something. Will he not do whether I do or not? Babuji's answer when I asked him this question, why? Why should I? If you are not interested in your evolution, why should anybody else be interested in your evolution? I thought of what, it was, uh, what I thought was a very intelligent reply. I said, God's purpose that we all should evolve. He said, God will take care of it. <laughs> he said, there is infinite time, you see, and he can wait. Can you wait? And all this progress, brothers and sisters, is not for our sake. The routine progress, like you see in movies, you know, where Lord Krishna is standing and one stream of people going in, another people of stream then coming out. The automatic process of evolution is limited. And in which we all participate without any question of time or number of lives or yugas or anything. It goes on and on and on and on endlessly. Some religions speak of that. They say, no, it's not possible in one life. Why would you say it can be done? Provided you apply it yourself to it. He said, food is there. Unless you eat, how can you do it? How can you become healthy, grow? And then he said something which was very, very, you know, eye-opening to me. He said, at high levels, you are trained, made perfect to fulfill his purpose, to work for him. I said, Babuji, then this is like my employer paying me more and more. I say, I do better and better and sacking me when my work is over. <laughs> he laughed and said, well, it would not be wise to think like that. But tell me, Patasati, why should God perfect you? for your sake. It is okay if you are liberated and you are out. Why should he take you, become, make you his son and one day allow you to become, you know, part of himself? Dayavastha. It is only to fulfill the divine purpose because he needs workers dedicated to his purpose to go on with the work here. Then there is a reference in the Veda, you see, which justifies this, which says, Devam Manushurupena. God does not work direct, He works through human beings. Like a carpenter does not cut with his hand, but he uses a saw, a chisel, a plane. An ironmonger doesn't work with his hands. He uses an anvil, he uses a furnace, he uses hammers, rollers. 
even we work through something other than ourselves. A wise man works with his education, with his knowledge, with his wisdom. A fool works with his foolishness. So does a human being ever work is a very moot question. No is my answer. These qualities help us. If I am foolish for the moment, unfortunately, my foolishness is the instrument through which I can work. If I am wise, those are my instruments. If I am a chemist, that is my instrument. Think of it. As human beings, we need these instruments, physical and mental and intellectual. God, as God, needs instruments here. Well trained, equipped with what? With a heart that can love and sacrifice eternally, unstintedly, without question of deserving. Does he deserve it? You are not to question. If God sends you somebody, you do the work. You don't say, but Master, he looks undeserving. And Master can ask, what would you have felt if I had said that to you when you came? How did you think you were deserving? This is like a stray puppy coming into our house, you know, and you love dogs and you accept it. And one day it becomes a wonderful dog. You have to make that stray puppy into a wonderful dog. We are all stray puppies who have wandered into this garden of my master, where we are first trained to become something, as Babuji said, from animal man to be human man. And after that, if he thinks you can fulfill his purpose, you are taken to higher stages. Nothing is conferred, nothing is given, but we are blessed with this enormous scope of this training, spiritual training of the great masters, which makes us into divine instruments, which is an unsurpassable blessing in life, in this life or in any life. It is said that even, even angels are jealous when they see a human being progress like this. So on this auspicious day of divine, of the Guru Purnima, Please remember that a mud potter makes the pot, but by an empty pot we get nothing. So when we become animal man to human man, that is the empty pot still to be fired, still to be made capable of holding liquids, solids, powder, anything, and used to convey what he wants to convey in it elsewhere. I pray that you all understand that when we grow spiritually, we don't grow because we deserve it. We grow because He considers us capable of receiving it with humility, in a developing way of love for all without any prejudices, and able to distribute what He gives us to all without restraint. My prayers for you all. Thank you.